like standing room only here. We're adding, we're adding more space, and uh, that's great. It's good to see you. Uh, by the way, my name is Gary Davis, and I represent the U of A, I guess, today, the University of Arkansas, and the Poultry Science Department. A lot of the faculty here have a work with poultry. Uh, so many things interchange, as you know, as you study science and biology especially. It seems like a lot of fun, and, uh, and uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Thank you. Day. I just want to welcome you for Annie Donahue. Annie Donahue is our research leader, but she couldn't be here today. I'm Jerry Huff. I'm a microbiologist with the USDA Agricultural Research Service, which is up on campus in the Poultry Science Building. Um, when you're all done with it, you're gonna, when you're done with all your um, presentations, you're going to have lunch, and then in the afternoon, we're going to have three different activities. So I know it'll be kind of big groups, but you'll need to be in three groups. Um, one of them will be to just stay here and we have five different activities for you to um, play with. So in the afternoon, I'm gonna show you some of the fun things we're gonna do with uh, chickens. I have a bunch of baby chickens and you're gonna suit up and you're gonna weigh them and measure their temperature. This, I'll tell you why we do those kind of things. And you're also gonna go across the street uh, Dr. Philip Moore, he has his rain simulators there and he works with um, the environment and trying to prevent pollution from poultry litter. He'll talk to you about that. So that's the afternoon and you guys have a great morning. <laughs> I'm going to be out of here. Alright, so the format is to uh, have student presentations for a while and then uh, take a break. So. So Joseph's have to go first because they're leaving first. It's always hard to go first, so they want to come out. St. Joseph's and set up. Our project was on corn earworms, and our question was: Do corn earworms grow better in natural or artificial? So we thought that. Um, no, uh, natural and artificial lighting that natural would provide the best environment for the caterpillars to grow. Okay, so what we did was we numbered the caterpillar containers 1 through 12, and then we cut the side of a tissue box and covered the area with plastic wrap. And then we placed the box by the window with sunlight. So after we did the experiment, we found out that the cornea worms grew best in artificial light, and we rejected our hypothesis our hypothesis because we thought it would grow the best in natural, it grew the best in artificial. I was, I was uh, working at some numbers and notes there. The, the dark worm had some growing in the dark. And what was their growth? Um, their average growth was about 22, but it was the control, so we, that was what we were comparing everything to. So they grew the best, which would make sense since they live their life in the dark, inside the corn. Right. Thank you both. Our hypothesis was that the pepper would work more because uh, the pepper would work more on purple because corn is usually darker. Yeah, and then our scientific method was we wanted to find out whether the worms like salt or pepper, as we explained earlier, and of course our hypothesis our hypothesis was correct. And Yes. Well, good morning everyone. We are Gentry High School. Our problem statement was, if corn earworms are exposed to alpha radiation, how will it affect the corn earworms? So we split up our design into four groups made up of 120 total. And our first group, or our control group, we had 30. They were given no radiation at all. Our, uh, our first actual group was given one dose of radiation and they again had 30. Our second group was given two doses, while our third group was given three. The materials we used were a Model 30 GC lab that kept the worms at 21 degrees Celsius or 69.8 degrees Fahrenheit. 
The corneal and the larva were, sep were separated into four equal groups. The control group was not exposed to any radiation. Group one was exposed to a single dose of radiation. Group two was exposed to two consecutive doses of radiation. And group three was exposed to three consecutive doses of radiation. Very well presented. Spoken clearly, so it's not science until it's communicated. So that is clearly communicated by speech. And the visuals of the graphing, the data collection, so stop hold up. Yeah, I can't tell them you're not in high school, it's not just feel. Four words. Five. Luke Jones, Brock Miller, Mark Rochdale, Emily Mosley, and Kendra Collins. Life cycle. The adult moth can travel great distances. For example, other moths travel to Ohio. Most eggs are deposited on corn silk. Within four weeks, new generations of moth emerging begin to repeat the cycle. Size of corn worms are about 1.5 inches or 3.7 centimeters long when full grown. Habitat. Cornier worms live in beans, corn, peas, peppers, potatoes, squash, tomatoes, roses, and cotton. They basically eat their home. <laughs> Interesting facts. One, cornier worms come in colors of pink, yellow, brown, or green. Two, if another cornier worm is on the same plant, it will wreak havoc or eat one another. Three, a cornier worm infestation is limited to the Hold well on. <laughs> yeah, they, they, have a, they have one of the best school gardens I've seen. We ordered 10 for we ordered 10 for our worms and um see what we do this. We used four strawberries and vegetables. So it was kind of too late. And then here's some pictures of us scooping them out and putting them in the circle cocoons, putting them in the big jars where we can have cornmeal. And then that's my project. Two corn earworm corn juice, an empty spray ball, corn, and a worm container. Um, our procedures were first we put one corn earworm in the petri dish and the other in the plastic corn earworm container. And then for the next few days, observe the height and the weight of the corn earworm. In conclusion, we saw that the corn earworm did eat or feed on the corn juice sprayed dandelion. It was a very interesting experiment and a great learning experience. Thank you for watching. Uh, a very interesting project. So in theory, the farmer could go around the outside of the field and spray with liquid corn juice. Yes. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well done. Our, our project was to see whether the amount of light affects the growth of the corn earworms and decreasing the amount of available light 
Uh, Our materials, you, if you were to recreate it, you'd need two plastic cups with lids, two earworms, food, a dark environment, or non see through plastic cup, light, and water. So our conclusion was the worm in the light grew more and lived longer, and the worm in the darkness, and the light does affect the growth of the corneal because they eventually die without light. Next label group. Um, our hypothesis was that the corn earworm normally eats corn, and spraying them in solution on the corneal carb before earworm is not consumed in corn. Worm A is a control worm. We Worm A to observe what would happen while using only worm, only regular worm. For worm B, for what we did, we sprayed woman juice on the corn. In conclusion, we gathered enough information to conclude what worm A the control went along with its normal life cycle while just eating corn that had. All the other Lego people come out front. I just want for you to hold. Oh, you do now. There we go. My project is Pebble Bubble Flying Trouble. It's about Don Bruce Show and Corn Air Worm Moss. I wanted to find a way that would not hit the corn and also a way that would kill the Corn Air Worm Moss. My hypothesis was supported by my data. The Don Bishop did kill the corn airworm moss. And that was my project. And I found out that there's a lot of gardeners out there, and a few farmers, that like to use home remedies as their pesticides. It's cheaper and it apparently works just as well. In conclusion to this project, which, I'm sorry, I forgot to state my hypothesis, which was that the hot pepper spray would be the best scent. Um, and it, it was supported by the data found for this project. And in conclusion to this, the hot pepper spray works just as well or better than the commercially used pesticides that was Our experiment. We will be testing to see if spraying the ears with olive oil prevents the corn earworms from eating it. Our hypothesis, if we spray the corn with olive oil, then the corn earworms will not be attracted to the ear of sweet corn. Steps of our experiment. Step one, buy two ears of sweet corn and spray one of them with olive oil and leave the other one bare. Step two, place the corn earworm in the area where both ears of corn are, then see which ear of corn the worms are attracted to eat. Step three, repeat the process four times because we have four different worms. Step four, observe and record the data, then create a conclusion and see if our hypothesis was correct. Our conclusion, corn earworms are more attracted to corn that is sprayed with olive oil. Our hypothesis is incorrect because we thought that the worms wouldn't be attracted to the corn that was not sprayed with olive oil, but they were more attracted to them. Somebody else? <laughs> well done, well spoken, very good. Right, then we got Van Buren. Do you have something to load up? <laughs> so this <it's> loads. <laughs> We're part of the Van Buren High School FFA chapter. Um, we spent the last few months um, studying and experimenting on the corneal worms. We did our experiment and we were wondering what kind of climate zone they live in, and we put them in hot, warm, and cold temperatures. First, I would like to point out that we did not think that the corn earworms that were in the cold climate would survive very long. Our, our hypothesis, we thought they would survive best in the warm temperature, but uh, I guess we were wrong. They survived the longest in the cold. Right. Action. Our hypothesis, 
hypothesis is that if we change the food regularly, regularly and give them plenty of nutrients and finish their life cycle, they will then reproduce and die all adults. The eggs hatch three to four days after being laid. The larvae usually grow up to about 3.7 millimeters long. The color of the corn earworm pupa is normally brown. Our pupas were about two to three millimeters in length. Moth. The corn earworm moth is a tan color. The female can lay up to a thousand eggs in her lifetime. Our hypothesis was disapproved. Only one fifth of the corn earworms in our made it to adulthood. The other four fifths died while a pupa. We hope you enjoyed our presentation.